Sabbath Church. The Sabbath school emphasis this morning is on prayer. And so because of this, um, the title for today's remarks is called, is titled, The Lord Teach Us to Pray. The basis for our purpose this morning is Luke 11, 1. Can we read this together? One, two, three. Now Jesus was praying in the first of the Gospels, we know the disciples asked Jesus for many things, right? They asked him um, if they could be the first number one in his kingdom. They asked to sit at his right and left hand, right? They also asked, when are you establishing your kingdom? We've been waiting so long. One of the most important things that they asked Jesus is, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus immediately began to teach them. The prayer that he taught them is one that many of us have memorized as children, commonly known as the Lord's Prayer. Not only did Jesus teach the disciples how to pray, but he also practiced a life of prayer. The Gospels tell us that Jesus often went early in the morning into solitary places to pray. He also prayed for his disciples. We read one of the Jesus' priestly prayers um, in John 17. It says, I'm praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. Not only did he pray for his disciples, but he also prayed for those who would come to believe in his name in the future. That's you and me. John 17, 20 says, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Amen. <laughs> Colossians 4.2 also admonishes us to continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. So prayer is a very um, interesting and deep topic. And when I was in high school, I had to do a senior project. And so our Bible teacher said, yeah, you can pick any subject. And so I chose the Bible class. It was very interesting for me. And so he gave us lots of options. I said, I'm going to do about prayer. It seems pretty easy. It was very difficult. <laughs> and I had to do so much work because every time I would submit my paper, he would ask me another question. And I thought, I didn't think about that, and I didn't write about it, so I'd have to go back and do it again. So that really sparked in me an interest in prayer. And so um, a few years ago, I bought this book here by E.M. Bounds on prayer. He's a prolific uh, uh, writer about prayer. And this book has, he wrote several books, and this is just like all of the books together. And it really deepened my thinking on prayer. And so this morning, since we're talking about prayer, I'd like to share a quote that I read in this book, and it really has um, stayed with me even today. It's a long quote, but I think it's important for us. He says, we have ever reason to fear that we are doing more of other things than prayer. This is not a praying age. It is an age of great activity, of great movements, but one in which the tendency is very strong to stress the seen and material and to neglect and discount the unseen and spiritual. Prayer is the greatest of all forces because it honors God and brings him into active aid. Amen. Is this not the world we live in today? How many of us have dedicated time for prayer, like Jesus did? Because of this, I would like to introduce a sequence for prayer that will be easy for us to implement and that we will be practicing this morning. It's called the Fingers of Prayer. Many of you may have heard of it, different variations of it, and this is not the only way there is that people have shared you know, steps to prayer, but it's the one that I would like to talk about today. The first one begins with a thumb. It starts with praise, praising God for who he is and what he has done. Then the pointer finger, we have thanksgiving, thanking God for what he has done and what he is going to do. Then we have the middle finger, which is confession, confessing our sins before God. 
Then we have the ring finger intercession, praying for others, for specific people, and for specific purposes. Then we have the pinky finger petition, praying for yourself and those whom are the most important to you and where we can tell God all of our needs. And lastly, the palm, which is for receiving, we listen for God's blessing and for his word. And so now, I'd like for us to enter a time of prayer. I will begin each section of prayer, and then I will give everyone time, about 30 seconds, to pray in your heart, to pray individually. And then I will pray the next section, and then we will move from praise to thanksgiving, confession, intercession and petition, and then lastly, listening. So as we begin this time, I would like us to bow our heads so we can begin with praise. Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. We begin this time of prayer by praising you for who you are. As we pray individually, bring to our minds your character, who you are, and let us praise you with gladness and joyfulness. Let's pray. to thank you for all you have done for us and for your guidance and protection throughout this week for preserving our lives that we may enter the Sabbath hours of rest. we are to come boldly onto the throne of grace, that we may obtain, obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We claim that today and come boldly to your throne, knowing that you will hear and answer our prayers and petitions according to your will. <laughs>
Thank you, Father, for the privilege that we have to come to you in prayer. We pause now to listen for a word from you. joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I pray that this prayer that we have practiced today may be a blessing in each of our individual lives and it may strengthen our relationship with God that we may be drawn closer to him, not just in words, but in daily practice and in living. Amen. Let's prepare now for the divine service. <coughs> 